haven't been able to get UFC London tickets three times in a fucking row has to be some kind of conspiracy. Dana, you blacklisted me, babes. Is it about what I said? Am I especially salty because my so-called friend and flatmate ditched Dan and I so that he could get himself a ticket instead of trying to get three together as we agreed? Am I? Of course I fucking am. I hope he has a truly terrible time. Anyway, we're making the most of it. And here are my fights to watch at UFC London. <laughs> Let's start with the main event because I might cry, <laughs> I might get all emotional for old Leon and uh, we can't end the video like that, what a Debbie Downer, you'll all be so freaking concerned for me just watching the minutes go by hoping there's a video next Sunday, can't promise anything. If you're that concerned though, you can send me two tickets to UFC London, <laughs> I'm saying sort a girl. Out. We all remember how the rematch ended, right? I know I have quite the way with words, but I couldn't do it better than Leon. Pound for pound! Headshot dead! It was the fifth round. It was going Kamaru's way. He was so close to closing the chapter on this one. One minute. One minute to shut up any doubters. And then Leon closed the chapter on his consciousness and the trilogy became a lot more interesting. And of course it's a mark of respect to Usman, to his reign, to how the fight was going, that Leon's first title defence would be against him in London. You sound like you're from London town. Like, Kamari was a dominant. He'd had a terrifying run up the rankings, do you remember? And defended the belt five times. And with Leon being our only current champion, having that fight take place in London was a no-brainer. There were rumours that Kamaru wouldn't be fully recovered, but here we stand. Leon has said that the rest of the division are mere children. Even the Hamzats of the world need to face a Colby of the world before they get a shot, or potentially a headshot. But that fight would be huge promotionally as is the nature of the wolf. He remains undefeated, showed us his metal against Burns, and you know, there was the Holland one as well. The way the last fight ended was spectacular, but it was by no means a lucky shot. They drilled that, they'd spotted a flaw in Usman's head movement, and they'd strategize. But, <laughs> It would be difficult to replicate. I'm not just talking about that one shot because obviously you imagine that Hamaru, that Kamaru has um, worked to not duck his head like that and leave himself open, but any one shot, any fight ending shot in the last minute of the last round of the fight, like. It doesn't happen all that often. Edwards has said that he won't be looking for a, another clip for the highlight reel. He says his um, performance will be increased just naturally due to fighting at the altitude that he's used to. He says he's sharpening all his tools, leaving no stone unturned, so that he can capitalise on any opportunity. He doesn't care how he does it as long as he leaves with the belt still wrapped around his waist. And he's confident that he will, despite Kamaru getting the better of him for the best part of 24 minutes. Leon made quite a few mistakes last time out. Like, the weight of the moment, the adrenaline, the nerves may have all had something to do with that. But it's a different story this time round. Like, he's the champion, he knows he can do it, he knows he can beat Kamaru, he has that champion level experience now that he didn't have last time. He's unlikely to make so many mistakes this time round. But what kind of Kamaru are we gonna see? Like knockouts can make people gun shy. Surgery can set you back. Like Edwards was likely right back in the gym straight after that last fight. But Kamaru had, some, had to take some time out, you know? Edwards is younger. He didn't really suffer any kind of 
significant damage the last time around. So yeah, he probably was straight back at it. No delays. I think it's such a difficult fight to call. Like, you never count Kamaru out. Never. Don't fucking do it. But you've got to also count Leon in. And I know that is also a struggle for you. Like, Kamaru could come out, completely dominate, like, cement the narrative that some are going with that it was a fluke, and kind of <laughs> carry on on his journey with that being just a little bump in the road. But Leon could come out and have corrected those mistakes and have a more complete performance this time. Now, Leon is also looking to get a- another win back, loss back. Yeah, another loss back. Get back. Yeah, you know what I mean. This Saturday. <laughs> the last time he fought at the O2 Arena, the last time he fought in London, he was booed out of the stadium due to a lackluster performance against Gunny Nelson. He should have the fans on his side as he walks out this time. But will that be the case as he walks back in? So let's move on. The Justin Gaethje. <laughs> have you seen that clip? <laughs> I'll, if I can find it, I'll insert it. That's Anthony Miranda's mugshot, and his face says it all. The man he tried to mug? An ultimate fighter. The ultimate fighter's name is Justin. That's all he goes by. If I can't, I don't care. The Justin Gaethje versus Rafael Fiziev fight is the one I am most excited for. The one I am most upset that I'm not going to get to see flesh on eyeballs. <sighs> After his last performance against RDA, Fiziev. That was a struggle. Fiziev called out Justin, saying that he'd just proven who was the best Raphael in the UFC, so now it's time to prove who has the best nose job. Despite coming into this off of a second failed championship attempt, I'm really fucking struggling today. Let me just have some coffee and get my brain in gear. Despite coming into this off a second unsuccessful bid for the title, Justin Gaethje remains one of the most credible names on the roster, remains near the top of the rankings because he always puts on a bolts to the walls performance, uh, he never backs down from a fight, and he has a head made from some kind of precious rock. And now he should be able to breathe through his nose as well, love that for you babes. And he has purposefully taken his time getting back here. Not just simply getting the surgery, but taking a lot of time to recover, let his body heal properly. Like he's no spring chicken. And in doing so may also protect the longevity of his career in ways that we have never seen Justin do before. He had his sights set on getting the winner of Poirier versus Chandler. Dream big. Dream big, Justin. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to see it again, but you lost to Poirier before, so... I'm not sure. I mean, I love the confidence. I love the confidence for you. But he will up his chances of getting that Poirier rematch if he beats Fazio. But do I think he will? Mm, no. <laughs> my heart says no. My heart says no. I'm sorry, Justin. My heart is with you, but it says no. Here's... Here's my theory. Bear with me. Here's my theory. The greatest artists of our time, myself included, thank you for saying it, are... Uh, not just our time, all times. Plagued. Plagued by our demons. If you've got demons, you've got downers, you've got some kind of struggle, you put that into your art and then you at least have that. You at least have world-changing art, even if you don't have control of your brain. Justin Gaethje, I'm not, I'm not, I may be jumping to conclusions, but again, it's just a theory. It's just a freaking theory I'm putting into the world. Justin Gaethje has always had this really like strong family ethic, you know? Like he's really close with his family, he likes doing wholesome family things. Everything he does in his career is for his family, but he didn't have one of his own, you know, that he'd made, built from scratch, you know what I mean? Single Pringle. And for someone who holds family in such high regard, you'd think that that might beat on a person worse than Dustin Poirier could eat away at you, you know? And you put that into your art. Now, he's all happy and love and all those sickening things. And yes, I don't know exactly when he fell in love, I was not there. But he didn't post about it, I do not believe, until after his last fight. So we have to imagine that it was fairly fresh the last time that we saw him 
lose. <laughs> it's like clutching at straws. But if we're just going down theory lane, and it's we've seen it happen before, not necessarily love, but distractions and other avenues other than just being obsessed with fighting, we can assume that one might be spending less focused time on, you know, being world champion and more on a lady that he's not he's not channeling his demons into his art anymore. He's not channeling his focus into his art anymore. And all I'm saying is stay miserable, guys. You'll do wonders for your career. Now, Fiziev is running after Justin's spot on the roster like the madman he is. And we all love Justin because he's like this Jekyll and Hyde character. You know, he flips that switch when he steps into the octagon. But outside of it, he's all glasses wearing golf guy. Fiziev is all Hyde or Jekyll, I don't know, the wild one. I don't read. He's won his last six fights in a row over some pretty big names in Renato Moicano, Bobby Green, Brad Riddell, and as forementioned, Rafael Dos Anjos. But he's staring down the barrel of the gun at his toughest matchup ever, one that he called out. And it should be a slugfest and it should mean fireworks for us all. Now both these guys, in theory, are incredible defensive wrestlers, but neither of them are going to shoot, so who the fuck cares? <laughs> what we should care about is can Justin's boxing get beyond Raphael's kicks, who will use movement better? Because both of them have great footwork. Now I can't tell you whether this is like real analysis or just... I was about to say make a wish foundation. <laughs> that was dark, wasn't it? Am I going there? Is that where the humour's going to? channel your demons into your art, love. Um, or just wishful thinking. But I think Justin needs to go old school Justin and just make this one nasty. You remember when he didn't consider strategy at all and just... <laughs> and that's still not a sure thing because Raphael can swing and Justin's chin cannot hold out forever. But Vaziev gets tagged quite a lot and if Justin can just land those bullet cha train shots, then maybe he can derail a train of his own. And it wouldn't be a London card without the most active, most determined future UK champion, Mohamed Makayev. And it wouldn't be a blank expression London video <laughs> without me talking about my favorite Wigan Dagestan amalgamation of fight excellence. Now, Mo suffered a shoulder injury that made us all very concerned for not only his place on this UFC London card, but also for his, you know, road to becoming the youngest ever UFC champion. But they worked some damn magic because he was up and training in less than a minute. And that training has mostly been taken... And that training has mostly been taking place in Thailand with a fucking menu of incredible fighters that puppy's gonna cry now. Piotr Jan, Hamza Chmaev, Darren Dill, as well as Mo's old rival, Charles Johnson, um, PFL champ, Brendan Lochnane, Kane Musa, and some big old prospects in uh, Magdi Grieve and Ibrahim Ibrahimov. Surround yourself with your biggest challenges and nothing will feel like a challenge. At this point, and until the division, the rest of the division stops running, it doesn't really matter who Mo is facing. He tried to get ranked opponents, he tried to challenge himself against the best in the octagon as well as outside of it, but it's the same old story, like no one's signing, no one's signing. So Mo is going to be welcoming another debutante who is hoping to make a name for themselves off the back of Mo's, like propel their career forward super quick sharp. But they'll likely just end their UFC run before it begins, really. And then finally, Roman Delidze, Marvin Vittori. Delidze has been looking like a problem at middleweight, tearing through his last four opponents and setting his sights on sorry Marvin. This fight could be make or break for Vittori if he really hopes to ever achieve that Italian dream. And it could catapult Delidze into the top five. Big sticks. Delidze is exciting to watch because he's always a knockout threat with three of his last four coming to our eyeballs that way. Make sure you give those eyeballs a good clean, you don't want an infection. He took out Carl Dorcas, Phil Hawes and Jack Manson that way and got the UD, again, <laughs> and get cream for that, over Staropoli. The internet seems to be split on this one. I 
even did an Instagram poll and got a 50-50. Some people are saying that Delize is better everywhere and it's high risk, low reward for Vittori. Some people are like, I see Marvin taking it anyway, damn well pleases. And then some think it'll be a close decision. What do I think? What do I think? Me? I think Delize is great everywhere, powerful, good ground game, but he is a little seasoned, a little salt and pepper seasoning on that guy. Vittori's never been finished, Delize. so is Delize going to be able to get a win in the way that he has become accustomed over Vittori? Probably not. So I can see this going to a decision and going Marvin's way. It was an exciting card because we had those first two in London, the first two for a while, and they seemed to be kind of a rinse and repeat of the same old names and now we're getting freaking the Gaethje's of the world on the London card. It's a good time to be a UK fan. I am not going to be doing a reaction video to it because I want to soak it all up and also I might just be crying at the fact I'm not there. Keep your eyes on my channel because I'll have thoughts to share in some way I'm sure. And next Sunday it'll be Cheeto time so like, subscribe and you know, turn that notification bell on because you don't want to miss this. Bye.